The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady, and this is our hour to talk taxes. And we want to make sure you don't overpay. We want to make sure you get the biggest refund. And we want to make sure you don't get love letters in the summertime. And believe me, that's what we kind of wanted to devote the show to this week is about some of the things that I'm sure people are doing wrong and that will absolutely either hold up your refund or you're going to get a letter in the summertime uh, with a little bill attached. So we want to make sure we can uh, talk about that. And, I, and I'm joined in studio with Chris Fabian. Hey, Chris. Hello, Esther. Hello, Christopher. Yeah, you and been these, busy? Uh, just a little. But <laughs> th- these letters you're talking, they won't be coming with Blue the dog, too, playing Blue's Clues. These aren't fun letters. These are nasty. Blues, clues, where have you been? <laughs> My God, that's harkening back 20 years, isn't it? Whoa, blues, clues. Anyway, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We have all of our offices open, um, most of them 9 to 5 um, on the weekend, 9 to 9, Monday through Friday. There's a few of our smaller offices that have just individual days that were open, and when you call to make an appointment, we'll, we'll straighten you all out on that, too. Um, we... Uh, we we think of you as family, and we want to make sure that we do the very best job. So if you're thinking about, uh, you you if you did it on your own and it looks weird, <laughs> let Auntie Esther and a group look at uh, your return. Uh, our phone number here in studio because we love to hear from you eight zero three zero nine three zero eight zero three zero nine three zero star nine thirty on a cell phone. If you want to text us, we love those texts seven one six eight zero three zero nine three zero is our text. So, okay, just before I get to Bob in Rochester, who's already already on the phone, I want to talk about one of the things that I'm sure not only people don't know about, uh, there's many people that are doing it incorrectly, and that's kitty tax. Right, Chris? Oh, my gosh, kitty tax. So that's (coughs) just for the kitties. Yeah, which in this case is anybody under the age of 24 who's a full-time student, unless you're 19 and under, then it does. But this is any... And claimed as a dependent on your parents' return. Any unearned income over $1,200, including unemployment, gets taxed with a kitty tax, which means the child is going to pay at the parent's tax rate. Right. And so the kind of the history of this is that back before there was a kitty tax, many times people, affluent people, would say, gee, we're in the 40% bracket, but our kid is in the 5% bracket or 0%. So we're going to put all of our... our, investments in the kid's name and then they'll pay at a low rate and we won't have to put it on our 40 percent tax return and so then the uh, the government got wise to it and said oh yeah well if your kid has unearned income of which unemployment is unearned income right right yep. if your kid has unearned income and that they're claimed on your return then that you have to do on their return a kitty tax which means they pay taxes at your rate so you haven't saved a thing and and you got to be careful i mean i'm not just saying this to scare people i mean i did one this year and the person's income was two thousand dollars and i'm doing the kitty tax and i'm going the computer's coming up with seven thousand dollars in tax wait that's way more than they're making this campaign and it took me 20 minutes to, to figure, figure it, it out. out right so it's not so, an easy thing to do it isn't so at that point in time when you have your kid that's gonna have to pay kitty tax what you have to think about is maybe i shouldn't claim the kid on my tax return now yesterday i did one where the the child had like eleven thousand dollars in unemployment and maybe a seven thousand dollar w-2 and was a full-time college student so i had to work it out which was going to work out best for mom with the kitty tax and it came down to the mother made out by about five hundred dollars claiming the child but the kid is really getting stuck with the kitty tax right right but you know and it also then comes down to support 
you know, did did mom support the child too? And you got to look at that aspect. Absolutely. Too, okay, know. let's. Why don't we go to the phones? I, I, I I'm. <laughs> I don't know. I'm stepping on you, Chris. I'm so sorry. We're gonna go to Bob in Rochester, who's been waiting and waiting. Hi, Bob. To talk. Howdy, Bob. I have a. Uh, I have a quick question regarding the removal of a residential underground heating oil tank uh, in New York. You called yesterday. Yes. Do you, oh, do you I, know about a credit for that? There's no, no credit for that, Bob. There is no credit. No, there's no credit. There wasn't one yesterday. There's still not one today. Okay, I'm just looking at the New York State site, and uh, there are instructions on uh, how to do that on Form IT-254, if that's still applicable. But may, maybe that's all. Well, I, I will take a look at it, and, and if you give... Frank, your phone number, we will call you back. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. All right. Let's go to Fred and West Seneca. Hi, Fred. How can we help you? Hi, Esther. A couple questions for you. Uh, We sold our home last year and did not make uh, over the $500,000, so I realized I don't have to pay tax on that. Is there any place on on the 1040 that I have or the New York form that I have to indicate that we sold our home? This was your personal residence? Yes. Yes. And never used for like an office in home or any type of depreciation? Never. Okay. Did you make a profit of over 500000 He said no. Okay. So then, no, there's nothing you have, you have to, to do. do. Yep. Okay. Uh, question number two, my sister's supplemental needs fund. She made $450 total interest last year. Do I have to file the 1041 again? Oh. I, I think it's 600 on I know a there's fiduciary. a 100 a 300 and a 600 dollar deduction i think it's the 600 and you're going to be okay but what you would do uh fred is <laughs> i'm going to ask frank <laughs> poor frank uh to take your phone number and i'll make sure which of the three uh before you'd have to do it but i think it's the 600 and i think you're okay 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 i'll give them my phone number then thanks all right yeah. thanks fred yeah. um we got okay. a we got a text. Um, I hear you on the TV commercials. You talk about how working seniors could get eight hundred dollars back. Could you explain? Well, how actually, this works? they could get more than that, and I just picked eight hundred because it it was what I think a modest uh, earned income credit would be. If you are a single for the fir- uh, senior for the first time ever, and you're working, and your income is relatively low, you qualify for the earned income credit. And if you have earnings then and your income is like under eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars, then you would qualify for the earned income credit, which can range from actually a dollar up to like eleven or twelve hundred dollars. So uh eight hundred dollars was kind of in between. So the earned income credit. Right. Okay? Right. And let's one more text before we go to a break. Can you tell me where I will find the small charitable tax deduction if you don't itemize? Well, that's right on page one of the 1040, right below the standard deduction. So if you're single, had a household. Um, married filing joint. Married, well, single, had a household, it's $300. 300 right. Married filing joint, you get a six, up to a $600 deduction. Right. And it's up to, so they don't allow you. It's not like they say, gee, you're a sweetheart, why don't you just take $300? If you gave 300 you take 300 That's the maximum if you're single or head of the household. If you're married filing a joint return, the maximum's uh, 600 So if you... Didn't if you only gave two hundred, that's what you take. But that would be right underneath the standard de- deduction on page one. Correct. Okay. Hey, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Eight oh three oh nine three oh eight oh three oh nine three oh star nine three in a cell phone. We're gonna take a short break and be back on the other side with Jim and Dino and Don and you. Hey, to us, you are family. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, and I'm joined in studio with Chris Fabian, and Tiffany Fabian is back at the office sweating away. Anyway, uh, we're here to help you. And by the way, I just want to let Bob in Rochester know I was wrong. There is a credit for taking storage uh, of a tank out of your um ground it's 250 bucks so if he wants to call me or text me at egtax at hotmail.com that's my email address egtax at hotmail.com i will help him fill out the 254 
Okay, so that takes care of that one. Okay, um, let's go to the phones and we'll talk to Jim. Hi, Jim. Yeah, hi, Chris and Esther. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm actually, uh, we're actually a client of Chris's. And uh, I had a question about uh, your medical expenses and the $10,000 uh, amount. Can you What $10,000 amount? It's you first. Well, medical is seven and a half percent of your income. Adjusted gross your income. Your adjusted gross income, and then you have to be able to itemize. So, say your income is fifty thousand dollars. That would mean you would have to have medical of about four thousand, and anything over that would count for your itemized deductions. And then your rest. Then your Schedule A would have to be over your standard deduction which in your case is over $28,000. So between your property taxes, your mortgage interest, your charity, and then the medical over 4000 would have to total over 28000 uh, Got it, Jim? Pardon me? You got it? <laughs> I got it. Good. I thank you. So do, all right, You're thank welcome. you, Jim. Uh, you know... People know that they can deduct their medical, but what they don't realize is that on the Schedule A, there's different bars you have to jump through, hoops you've got to jump through. The first hoop is in chair, is in for, for medical is your medical has to be over 7.5% of your adjusted gross income. So if you have AGI of 100000 that means your medical's got to be 7500 to get a dollar. So if your medical expenses were eight thousand you subtract seventy five hundred from it and you end up with a five hundred dollar deduction to that you add all of your other uh itemized deductions yep. which would be taxes interest charities miscellaneous if that doesn't come up to your at least your standard deduction then it's better to take the standard deduction now it's very difficult actually for unless you're a very big tither or have a large mortgage um uh, interest that you're paying to hit that standard Especially deduction as a, as a couple, yep. but as a single person, it's easier. Right, right, right? because that's half of the. F so I hope that joint. makes sense to you. And let's go to Dino. Hi, Dino. How can we help you? Hi, yes, sir. My question is a medical expense too. Yeah, I had to have dental implants put in. Oh, that's expensive. It was fifty thousand dollars. Whoa! And I put. I put ten thousand dollars down. Okay. Remaining forty thousand, I put on two credit cards. Okay. And then, about a week or two later, I borrowed forty thousand against my four hundred one k to pay off the credit cards. Okay. So, what portion of that fifty thousand can I take as a medical expense? All right, the whole fifty is going to be a medical because you, in it, as soon as you were in a credit card, you already paid the doctor, so it was paid. It was paid through credit, but it was still paid. So the whole 50 plus now you want to make sure you take your prescriptions, your copays, your glasses, your travel, uh, any modification that was done to your home, uh, grip rails in the bathroom, walk-in tub if the doctor said to do it. Uh, all, all of that gets added together. And so maybe your whole medical and your health insurance and your Medicare and stuff, let's say the whole thing comes to 60000 If your adjusted gross income is 100 then uh, you have to take seventy five hundred off of that sixty thousand. Believe me, you're going to itemize. But even though the tax law specifically says you can't borrow against your four hundred one k to pay medical expenses, you you didn't. You borrowed against your four hundred one k. That was to that would be to get rid of the penalty. You borrowed against your four hundred one k to pay off a credit card. You didn't borrow against your four hundred one k for medical even though that credit card was used to pay the dental expenses. The, you paid off a credit card. You didn't okay. you didn't borrow okay. to free, you didn't borrow against your your 401k uh, 401k to, pay, to pay medical. You borrowed against it to pay off a credit card. Okay. All right. Okay. And anyway, Question. that would be for an exception to penalty. So, you don't how old are you, Dino? You know? I'm 63. So you have no penalty anyway. But the and when you borrow against your your four hundred one k plan, you're paying yourself back, which is a great thing. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. 
All right. right. Thanks, Dan. Should, okay. We got uh, a text. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Um, hi, Esther. I sell on eBay, and the new tax law for 2022 is <coughs> anything over 600 is to be reported when into effect in January 1st. I received a 1099 from eBay for 2021, and it said I sold 20, 21,500 last year. Do I only have to pay tax on the 1,500 since 20,000 was the cutoff for 2021? Oh, so. beautiful dreamer, wake unto <laughs> me. No, I mean, come on. You, When you're reporting your income, you have to report all income that you received. It The, the $600 that they're reporting is just to let the IRS know how much you actually received. And so if you sold $20,500 last year, that's what you have to put on your as a matter of fact your 1099 might say 20,500 and you know that you had another 1500 you have to report the extra money not just what the 1099 says but what you actually got right right and if you don't you think you're being smart the IRS is going to send you a letter in about a year and a half saying you owe twenty thousand dollars at thirty percent, roughly. Right, so and plus plus uh, FICA. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. Oh, that's, so you're going to get about six thousand dollar bill from right. the IRS right. with penalties and interest. And at that point in time, you have to do it right because they'll make you know yep. in order to get rid of it, you have to then do your Schedule C correctly. But by then, they have your number, and you don't want that. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. All right, let's go back to the phones. Let's talk to Don. Hey, Don. Hello? Yeah, Don here. Uh, hey, Don here. How are you? I have a question about uh, New York IT 229. Okay. I don't know if you've had this question or not. Um, Schedule B, computation of QRPT, which is your qualified property tax expense. Um, column B, real property taxes paid on the residents. You're probably not looking yeah. at this, but... No, what's, I know what's, what, I we know, know what, what you're saying. talking about. Yeah, what's so your go. question? Okay, column D, I'm out of star credit. It's what you really paid, Don. Not not what was billed, what was really paid, right. less any star, and less any star Extra rebate that you get. You got. Yep. That, that doesn't make any sense. They've already deducted the star from what I... No, no, I no, 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 no. Then, then if it's been deducted, it's what you pay. But some people have get a check. Yeah. So if they got if their taxes were 5000 and they got a rebate for star rebate of 300 then they have to take the 300 off the 5000 okay? But if yours already came off, it's going to be what you actually paid, and that's what you're going to get your credit on. So I just don't put anything under the star rebate. Not if you, not if it's already off your what was paid. Yeah. No, if you, don't. you didn't get a bonus check in the mail, right? Then there's nothing to deduct there. Well, it says star credit, and I thought that credit, you know, came off my school tax. It does. Your school and your county and your city taxes that all get mushed together, and that's and what you paid, you multiply by six percent. I called the state, and they couldn't even answer the question. Well, we did. We can. Uh, I'm still not clear. But I'm sorry, Don. Hey. Did you get an extra right, check? Let me do it real simply. What's your adjusted gross income, approximately? My adjusted gross income? Yes. I don't know, say 50000 All right. I'm so how much are your property taxes that you paid? I actually paid. How much did you actually pay? Thirty-five hundred. All right. So, thirty-five hundred minus three thousand is five hundred extra excess. You have to multiply that by sixteen percent. You don't qualify. Probably not, but I still. You don't qualify. You don't. You don't qualify. You make too much, or you don't pay enough. So, in thank you for your call, Don. All right. I'm Esther Golias, the tax lady from EG Tax. Let's talk briefly, and we'll talk on the other side of the news, too, about the 199A deduction. That is something that's available pretty commonly, don't you think? Right, for people who are self-employed. Even people who get dividends can have 199A right. dividends that qualify for that so, as well. So it's qualified business income deduction. 
So on your, if you're somebody that has a business, Schedule C, a professionally run Schedule E, and you're, you have a net profit, as long as it's not what one might be called a, spe- a, spe- a specified business that would have restrictions, such as a doctor or an accountant, then you would take 20% of the bottom line, and that's your QBI, and that's a deduction over and above your standard deduction and itemized deduction. That QBI deduction, that 199A deduction, is also found on your investment when they give you your investment information on your 1099, you take a look on there, it'll say 199A. That's a write-off. And you don't have to itemize to take it. Right, right, yep. So it's a 20, per, I mean, it's a great little credit. That Not even a credit, it's an adjustment to income. But it, it, it could help save people even 10 bucks. 10 bucks is 10 bucks. Right, well, or, you know, if it's, fi- if it's, if it's a one, if $500 199A, deduction it saves you fund seventy five dollars in taxes so right. so we want to talk about that too i'm esther golius the tax lady from eg tax 8030930 8030930 star 930 cell phone we're gonna break for news see you on the other side Hey, everybody, this is the tax lady. <laughs> you should hear, see some of our texts that are coming in. Anyway, we hope we helped that guy with the New York 229. Uh, let me just clarify that. The New York 229 is a refundable property tax credit over and above the IT214 that if you pay more than... Six percent of your adjusted gross income and property taxes you qualify to kind of do the form, then it's further reduced by sixteen percent. The credit is between two fifty and three fifty, and a lot of people qualify. Don't you think a lot of people qualify? Yeah, but do you know how many people I've done that have been like at two forty two? I know. I that know. Just That's true. miss it and That's it's like, true. That's uh, true. All right, let's go to the phone the, to the, the text. text we got here. Okay. If I sell my cottage that I bought twenty years ago and make a nice profit, do I have to pay taxes? Of course not. Yes, you gotta pay taxes. <laughs> uh, the only the, what, the only property real estate that you don't have to pay taxes on would be your personal residence that you lived in two out of the last five years that didn't have depreciation. If you had depreciation, you have to recapture the depreciation. Um, and, the, and the gain up to 250 if you're single, 500000 filing a joint return. But on your cottage, unless your cottage becomes your personal home, now you can plan. You could sell your personal home now and... Uh, not pay taxes, move into your cottage, live there for two years, and not pay taxes when you sell it, right? Right. So right. you can convert your cottage to your personal home. That would be good tax planning. <laughs> All right, what else we got? Um, I think this lady's a little confused in the year, but my daughter filed her 2021 taxes before they exempted she the She met the 2020. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. She has been waiting and waiting to receive her adjustment back, but has not. Should she file an amended return for 2021? I would call first. I think if you can get a hold of somebody, they'll do the research. Um, you might ultimately have to file an amended return, but I wouldn't do it right now. Uh, I'd call first. Right. And what I, <coughs> sorry, I've had a couple people ask me, I haven't gotten it yet, or my child hasn't gotten it yet. And I looked at their return, and they weren't entitled to anything. Because Actually, I saw that the other day, too. So she may not, what you think she's going to be getting, she may not get. That's true. You just might want to text it over to us, make a yeah. copy, and text it over to us or email it to us. And or we can stop take a by look. one of our or offices. stop by, yeah, and we'll let you know. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, wanted to talk about um, other things that people mess up with. On your investment, on that same 1099 form that you get from your brokerage that might have the 199A deduction that I bet you nobody's taking, there's also foreign taxes paid because your mutual funds are investing in in countries and in, in businesses in other countries, and you get a foreign tax credit. And you put that credit on form 1116, and that saves you dollar for dollar. 
So if you have a $300 foreign tax credit and you miss it, you just overpaid your taxes by $300. And they're not going to send you a check for $300 later saying right. you made that mistake. So foreign taxes, the 199A, four taxes paid off your investments. Make sure you put them on. And so you say, oh, I don't feel like messing around with that. Look at you. There might be $400 in tax savings right there. Our average fee is 100 we right. would have done it for you, and you would have still come out three hundred dollars ahead. So anyway, all right, let's go back to the phones. We'll go to Paul in Rochester. Hi, Paul. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm well. Um, I took the coronavirus distribution last year. The the care. Okay. Day. Oh, I wanted to talk about that next. So I'm so glad you're talking about it. Yeah. Yes. So I'm on my second year of that. Yes. And I'm working on my taxes, and you know I cannot process it because the form is in draft mode uh, at the IRS. Yep. Have you encountered that and what should I do and, and what kind of delay will that cause in my filing? Well, I know I, our software, we have to manipulate we have to do and we have to attach a copy of the form to the form itself. Right. It's really bizarre. And then it goes through so they actually see the form. Right. But by doing it, if you're doing it by hand, and it says draft well, on it. Well, I think it. he said, I think it's software. Oh, okay, your software. I, you would have to check with that software company to see if they have a workaround. Right. They don't, but when I go on the irs.gov uh, website, the form comes up as a draft. There's oh, it's not a draft. I mean, we, we have to attach a PDF need to, to our, to our uh, 8915. So I don't know how to, how to help you, Paul. Oh, maybe I just need to come in and finish it. You have us do the yeah. return. I mean, we'll be very happy to help you. But if you want, you can actually do it remotely if you don't feel like coming in from Rochester. No, I don't have no. Pro I have no problem coming in. Um, All right. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Bye. So that so that is exactly what I want to talk about. The this is year two for those people that took the coronavirus. Uh, option to take money out of your IRA or your pension plan and spread it out over three years. This is year number two. I love our software because it just flags it. Yep. So yep. you don't miss it. I mean, because m m I have not had one client yet that said to me, gee, Esther, make sure you include year oh, two. I, I have. Nobody's remembering it. Yeah, I've had a couple, but I know what you're talking about. It's really nice that it does flag, and I can see people missing it, and I can see a lot of letters getting mailed out saying. That's exactly right. So if you took the coronavirus option to take money out of your IRA, or your pension plan in 2020 without penalty, and they'll and you made the option to spread it out over three years. Guess what? This is year two, and guess what? They're going to know and be waiting for it. So you it's, use the form 8915 to report that second year payment. It's just like that 5405, that first time home buyer's yes. credit. If you don't put it on it, about that. they're going to catch it. That's exactly. But we got to follow up on that cottage right. text. Yeah. Um, what if the cottage is in Canada? This Now you're opening up a big can of right. worms. I hate to say that because you have to pay tax to Canada. Yes. Then you have to pay tax here. You do get a credit for the tax you pay to Canada, but it's not a dollar for dollar credit. Right. It's a percentage it's, to it's total. It's because it's a capital gains transaction, so the government doesn't <laughs> give you a dollar for dollar. So you have to do a special... 1116 with a special capital gains tax attached to it so you don't get dollar for dollar i had somebody this year ended up owing fifty thousand dollars on a sale of a cottage because because she didn't get the dollar for dollar credit she wasn't too happy because the person in canada told her she wasn't going to pay anything to the u.s right so the, so you pay taxes to canada get a foreign tax credit for taxes paid to canada on your u.s return Right. Okay. What else we got? Um, oh, someone texted in. Draft means the form is not finalized yet. Yep. That's why it says draft. Right. So they're just trying to help that other guy oh, out. Oh, okay. Great. All right. Um, wanted to also talk about other things that people mess up on. Who claims the kids? That's <laughs> less, last year it was less of an issue. 
um, I thought, I think, because so many kids were collecting unemployment, number one. And the other thing is everybody was looking for stimulus money. Well, the stimulus money, if you got it, you're not going to get it this year. So it's kind of going back to the way things were before 20 or in 20, before 2020. When you, if you have a child in college and your child under the age of 24, full-time student, you probably are going to be looking at claiming them on your tax return and taking the AOTC. Right, right, right. You know, and speaking of children and stimulus, more of stimulus, how many people have you had that I never got my stimulus? And please look in your bank account. I know. And then that's another it. mistake. Right. That is absolutely true. Because I, that's, that's, on my, that's my next thing, the I, recovery I rebate. actually have a client whose refund is now delayed. Because she said she didn't get it. Right. And well, I tr I warn my clients. I say, now look it. Oh, so you got a four thousand dollar refund coming right now. If you think you didn't get the fourteen hundred dollars, I'll put it on. You're sure you didn't get it, and so it's going to hold up your refund if you if you did get it, and they have to manually process it. So yep. you want to watch that yep. too. But the recovery rebate, remember, you can get. If, like, for instance, let's say you had a baby last year, and this year there's three of you, but last year there was two of you, and you got 2800 but you got nothing for the baby, you put that $1,400 on the recovery rebate, and you get the money. Exactly. Okay, let's go back to the phones. And Mark. Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark. Hi, Esther and Chris. How are you? Uh, we're good. Good. I'll, I will endeavor to be brief, um, and I'll take my answer off the air because I know there are other callers. I got a letter from Department of Treasury out of the blue yesterday that said I've got 1400 bucks of stimulus coming. This was unexpected. Um, when can I expect this money, and has anyone else received What's the date, Mark? What's the date on that letter? Uh, February 9th. Okay, it's just late. Okay, now... The, is it a letter saying you received fourteen hundred dollars? Because what they did in January right. and February this year, they mailed another letter out stating right. what you received right. for the third stimulus. So does it say EIP number three? Um, let's see here. It says IRS Gov EIP. Yep, number three. Right. Uh, the American Rescue Plan, the Internal Revenue Service issued due two thousand twenty one. Economic impact payments for the following issued. Oh, see, yeah, it, you, they, it means you got it. That's it means don't take it again this year. Um, I want to thank you for your service. It's excellent. God bless you both. Thank you. Thank you God a bless. lot, Mark. Appreciate it. I'll take all the God blesses I can get. I'll tell you. Yes. Then let's go to Larry, our buddy Larry in Georgia. Hi, Larry. What? Uh, hi, Esther and Chris. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you. How's things? Well, not. <laughs> Th 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 things are crazy, but good, Esther. Good. Ah, uh, that's good. Listen, well, how can we help you, Larry? Sure, thank you. A couple, of, a couple of fast questions. One, um, I read somewhere that if you wanted to buy I bonds, right, and, and have the government deduct it from your account, your check account automatically, you have to send in a certain tax form. I may be wrong, but have you ever heard about that? Uh, question. You can so you can take your refund and buy I bonds through your refund. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Okay, so to do that, can I do that automatically, Chris, or do I, do I have to submit some kind of form? No, I do that when I do your return, Larry. Okay. So we can talk about that when, when, when you have a refund. When the time comes. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, okay, well, speaking about the return, I want, to, I want to send in paperwork to you, and so I want to ask you, because I, you know, I never want, I, I never want to be, there to be any mistake between us, uh, do I send in the same thing as I did last year? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Thanks so much. And listen, amen. Thanks, Larry. Sure, bye -bye. Love you, guy. Have a great day. Thanks for calling. Have some okay, peaches on us. Okay, let's go back to, uh -huh. pardon me? I said have some peaches for us. Yeah, you probably will, down in Georgia. Let's talk to Kevin. Hey, Kev. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, I, How are you, Kevin? I'm enjoying the day because I'm listening to uh, Esther Goulias. That's why. Oh, you're so sweet. What can we do for you? You know, and your show encourages learning, and that's what I like. Two things. Hey, in my broker account, it took them a long time to send me their tax return, all my stuff, like foreign taxes and stuff. How come they, you know, right. like today they just got it. Are, are they always allowed to send them that laid out? Yes, they are. Yeah, they have to, to February 15th, but then they can file for an extension going to the end of February. 
if, if, if I made a mistake, I lost a chance of recuperating some data for somebody to do my taxes. So, oh, well, if they're allowed, they're allowed. My second concern is I have a, a pre plan of funeral arrangements with a, a local cem- or cemetery and the local bank. I used to get $300 a year interest on this account. This year they said because of the economic dr- downturn, I have no interest. I earn nothing because they didn't pay anything. That's fine. But all these years, the IRS, you know, I've had a, a claim or not a claim, but an interest income. This year, I'm not going to have it. How do I protect myself from the IRS? Oh, well, they're not. They're, they don't compare one year to the other. Oh no, they don't. You, I know a lot of people think that that you know people say, oh, I got a red flag. They don't compare one year to another. So, okay. um, the, you, each year stands on its own. Sounds good. Then I don't need anything from them. That's great. Right. Thanks, Kev. Bye bye. And that was Kevin from Buffalo. Right. And Kevin but, from you know Buff- that yeah. was. He's the second person I heard, and I wish I could remember the funeral parlor that says they didn't do interest. But I've seen interest for almost I have every too. one of my preplans, so I don't know what this company did. But maybe did. there's a bad investment yeah. funeral parlor. I don't could know. Be. Hey, could let's, be. Let's, uh, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We have to take a short break. We'll be back with Kevin, Kay, and Larry, and you on the other side. Hey, everybody, this is Esther Goliath, the tax lady, and this is tax season. Hello. And we're kind of talking about weird things that people do wrong, and they're, and quite frankly, it holds up their refund, or they're going to get a letter and, because they're doing it wrong, or they're overpaying their taxes. So that we kind of wanted to talk about that. So don't forget, if you didn't get, let's say you didn't get a stimulus last year because your income was $200,000, and there's three of you, and this year your income drops down to one fifty. dollars Now does you that qualify. Mean? Now you qualify. So you'd be able to do the recovery rebate. Those are some of the people that are going to get the stimulus that didn't get stimulus. The other thing is that's so important, as I had a client today, the, he, they didn't realize that the daycare credit, which is now 50% of what you pay the daycare, up to $8,000 if, you're, if you have one child, 16000 50% or 8000 for two or more kids. He didn't realize that the, the pre-K... That, that you pay for is considered daycare. And so we, we were able to get them some money back. I mean, the daycare credit is a big, giant deal. Right, and also... And it's refundable. Also, people have to look at their... Rethink their their FSA for dependent care. Great point, because Chris. Because now, with it being so high and not capped at 3000 per child, it's 8000 per child, the money you're saving using the actual credit versus the FSA outweighs. Well, let, let me give you an example. Let's say you're in the 10% bracket and you do an FSA for 5000 That only saves you $500. But that same 5000 had you paid the daycare directly, would have saved you $2,500. So... 500 or 2500 it all depends it's like playing bumper pool you got to figure out the best angles correct right good point i love that let's go back to the phones we're going to talk to kevin hey kev how can we help you hey i have two quick questions i'll listen off here the first one is that uh, i don't want to mess up my return so when i check my bank account to see if i got the stimulus or not will it say irs will it say uh federal it will oh. it will say irs eip Three. IRS EIP three. Okay. Three. And next question. Do you have any details? I heard in Financial Guy Show, but as tax people, have you heard anything about this initiative by Money Grab in New York State about small businesses? If you have nine or more employees, even if part time, they want to propose something that you have to pay, like retirement or something like that. You guys have any info on that? Or Details there was some, there there's was there's always stuff bantered around that says that they want to force employers to start uh, pension plans right now. I mean, a- anything New York State does for an employer that would force them to do something that costs money, I would not be surprised at. But no, I haven't heard anything specifically, Kevin. Okay, guys, have a good day. Thank you again. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Let's Kevin. Let's go to Kay in Tonawanda, North Tonawanda. Hey, Kay. Hi, hi, guys. Um, how do you, what is the formula to figure out whether you should do a short or long form? There is no short, there's no long form short forms anymore. It's the, it's the 1040, all right? There's a 1040 SR for seniors. Um, and it's just, it's just, the, there is no 1040 A's anymore. Okay, well, okay, my husband makes about 45000 a year. 
and you know i had a lot of medical and we do contribute a lot so how how would we know if all we right so let's do this quickly Kay, how much so you make he makes 45 you don't work outside the home no i don't all right and do you have other sources of income no so 45. I, I'm, I'm figuring out okay how much is the medical at least four thousand Okay, well, you're, you're, you have to take 7.5% off, so you only end up with 950 as a Schedule A. How much do you give in charity? Probably, maybe, I'm just guessing right now, 3000 No. You, all right, and, you, and your mortgage interest? There is none. Okay, no, you, okay. You'll, you'll take the standard deduction. Oh, okay. Okay, thank okay? you. Okay? Thank you. All right, thanks, Kay. Bye. All yeah, right. that, and that's because her standard deduction being married is, 20, is, is $25,000 yeah. right. about. So. Right, and I'm, I was over here at about $4,000, yeah. so 4000 or twenty five. dollars right. Okay, Larry, how can we help you? Good afternoon, Esther. I'm a Hi. farmer out in Chautauqua County, and I've been approached by a solar farm company to lease about 40 acres of my property to build a solar farm on. Now, is, is that considered farm income, or would that be rental income? That would be rent, land rent. Even though it's farmland? Yep. Yeah, because I think you got to grow a vegetable in order for it, or put a cow on it or something. Yeah, so once it changes use, you've specifically changed use. So, well, um, solar farms. <laughs> <laughs> well, give it a shot, Larry. <laughs> Thanks for calling. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. Um, want to go back to our little list of things here that we talked about the daycare credit. Chris brought up the fact if you have a, a FSA account at work, you might want to drop that. I can't see how for most people it would behoove you when you look at a 50% credit for daycare. Make sure you go to your daycare provider and ask for their social security number. There's no reason why you got to pay taxes and they don't have to. Uh, the energy credit, new doors, windows, furnace, hot water tank, insulation, maximum $500 uh, lifetime. People miss that. Um, and I told we talked about the COVID second time right. around. And on a Schedule F, there is no line for land rent, so it has to go on a on Schedule, Schedule e. e. Yeah. Uh, also, people that have um, uh, marketplace health insurance, don't forget you can look at the premium tax credit if you uh, if you have under subsidized. If you're over subsidized, you have to do that form, and you might have to pay back some of the. Uh, subsidy that you receive for your uh, marketplace health insurance. Okay, right. what else we got? We Greg? got a text question about taxes on Social Security benefits with Workman's Comp offset. They're saying I have money from benefits, but Social Security didn't give me that money. Do I have to pay income tax on that amount they're claiming they gave me or just what they actually paid me? Filing married with two kids. Thank you. So, well, so all your Social Security is taxable. There, there is no way to anymore to adjust for the offset that they're that they're claiming. Right. You used to be able to use the Workman's Comp as a Schedule A item, but they right. got rid of that they section. Did. So, so if it all depends on how much your income is. If your income is not over, I'm if you're single, uh, twenty five thousand, including half your Social Security, thirty two thousand, if you're filing a joint return, then you might not. It, even though it looks like it might be taxable, it might not at all. I don't, you know, and I'm kind of running out of time. Right, right. But the thing is, too, you got to look at doing a lump sum election. That's true. Because if you have a workman's comp offset in there, it's probably two or three or four years. If you had no income in those other years, you're probably not going to pay tax on that Social Security. Right. A lump sum election is where you go back and reconstruct the taxes that you would have paid had you gotten that, that money if, if that's how you've gotten this uh, Social Security payment. Right. It can save you a lot of money. Okay, I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax. I, I hope that um, you've learned a lot here. We try to let everybody know some of the things that, and, and believe me, this is just some of the things. And don't forget, just because you can't itemize on the federal doesn't mean you can't itemize on the state. Many times I'm, I've itemized and I go through the Schedule A with my clients and I find out that 
They may not be able to itemize on the federal, but they do on New York State. And don't forget that a lot of the expenses that are not deductible at all on the federal are deductible on New York State, especially if you're uh, somebody that uses their vehicle, have an office and home, pay union dues, um, professional dues, continuing education, all those things add up. Now it's true, the state is only like six or seven percent, but if you end up with an extra $5,000 deduction, that's $250 in your pocket. Right, right. Right? Yep. Okay, do we have another? Uh, no, the no. music's playing. Okay, all right. Well, we got to go. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. We want to help you. Thanks for listening.